with regret, with great regret, there's no organization in this country that could do more for the struggling black man than the black Muslim movement if it wanted to. But it has gotten into the possession of a man who's got become senile in his old age and perhaps doesn't realize it. And then he has surrounded himself by his children who are now in power and want nothing but luxury and security and comfort and will do anything to safeguard their own interests. So uh, I feel responsible for having played a major role in developing a criminal organization. It, it, it was not a criminal organization at the outstart. It was an organization that had the power, the spiritual power, to reform the criminal. And, and this is what you have to understand. As long as that strong spiritual power was in the movement, it gave the, it gave the moral strength to the believer that would enable him to rise above all his negative tendencies. I know, because I, I, I went into the movement with more negative tendencies for the betterment of the community by any means necessary. And since, since tonight we had to get into this old nasty negative subject, we didn't want to bring up our program. We're going to have... But as the African nation got it, we became proud of it. And when they ought to became proud of it, we began to have something least effect with it, but you mentioned uh, conspiracy between the black Muslims and the right wing of this country. Could you elaborate on that? I mentioned the conspiracy between the Muslims and the right wing in this country. I know for a fact that there is a conspiracy between among between the Muslims and the uh, uh, Lincoln Rockwell Nazi and also the Ku Klux Klan. There is a conspiracy. Describe this conspiracy. Well, the Ku Klux Klan made a deal or were trying to make a deal with Elijah Muhammad in 1960 in the home of Jeremiah X, the minister in Atlanta at that time, who at present is the minister in uh, Philadelphia. They were trying to make a deal with him to make available to Elijah Muhammad a county, a size tract of land in Georgia or South Carolina, where Elijah Muhammad could then uh, induce Negroes to migrate and make it appear that his program of a segregated state or separated state was feasible. And uh, to what extent these negotiations finally developed, I do not know, because I was not involved in them beyond the period of uh, December 19, uh, 1960. But I do know that after that, Jeremiah, who was the minister throughout the South, could roam the entire South and the Klan not bother him in any way, shape, or form, nor would they bother any of the black Muslims from then on, nor would the black Muslims bother the Klan. Are you inferring, then, that because of this conspiracy, the attempt was made upon your life? The attempt could have been made upon my life. Answer, ask that again. Are you inferring that because of this conspiracy, the attempt was made on your life. Not necessarily that conspiracy. The attempt was made upon my life because I speak my mind and I know too much. And they know that I will speak it whether they like it or not. Pardon me? Are you urging your followers to take any actions against the Muslims? Am I urging my followers to take action against the Muslims? No. No. When you say you rely on uh, Allah or the Allah, you've always been some kind of activist. Uh, am I going to try and infiltrate their organization and win over some of their supporters? No, I have never tried to win supporters from Elijah Muhammad. Since I have left the black Muslim movement, I've spoken at these rallies, those who come, come, those who don't, don't. But I've never gone out of my way to win over any of his followers. And he himself is fearful because he knows that you don't have to exercise too much energy to win his followers. As soon as they know truth and compare the two, uh, and by the way, this is the brother, this is, I didn't even see you there, brother. Yes, this is Leon Amir, who was Cassius Clay's secretary, whom they beat unmercifully up in Boston. And the, the court freed the men who beat him. They fined him $100, was it? Yeah, $100. Fined him $100. And uh, he was on the inside of the black Muslim uh, specialty squad. And, and, and I know it. And it was he who heard Elijah Muhammad Jr. come to New York when Elijah Muhammad was at the armory in June of last year. Jr. stood up and told the fruit, many of whom are here now also, that uh, I should have been killed 
that my tongue should have been put in an envelope and sent back to Chicago by now. And because Fat Joseph had not done it, they demoted him. He remained captain, but Clarence up in Boston was put over Joseph. And, and Joseph's uh, authority was curtailed. And then Clarence, the captain from Boston, and uh, John, the captain from Springfield, came to New York to assassinate me and came to him to get a silencer and couldn't get it. So the, the police know this. It's not something that's new. They just wait until the job is done and then they step in. Right. Malcolm, right. when you say, right. Sir, right. Do, you, do you know that Elijah Muhammad was behind this? Yes, Elijah, now, why, why, you, is this your belief? Yes. Elijah Muhammad invited, uh, called all of his officials, national officials, to Chicago in October and ordered them to kill or maim any of his followers who leave him to follow me. Well, uh, you, when you say, how do I know, many of the brothers who were in at that time are out now. And if this ever come into the court, there are plenty of witnesses who can stand up and testify to it. Pardon? Pardon. This specific I'd rather not say at this time. When you say you know too much, what do you mean? <laughs> Who's the next one? Give them, give them two more minutes. Give them two more minutes and we'll end it. Yes. Yes. When I said that no one can clean up our home but us, and that we will clean it up, including the and no and, and, and no one should control it but us, including the politics. What do I mean? I mean exactly that. That the black people. What, you're thinking of who? Powell. Powell. Powell's one of us. <laughs> No, he's not a member of our organization, but when I say he's one of us, I mean he's one of the family. And, and no one outside the family can get us to talk about him. If we talk about him, we talk about him within the family. But nobody outside the family can instigate us against power. Yes, by, by controlling it politically, I mean that the politics of the community of Harlem should be controlled by those of us who live in Harlem, not by somebody sitting down in Gracie Mansion. <laughs> Sir? Uh, no, uh, but the organization of Afro-American unity intends to get involved in every kind of action that's going on in New York City. We don't intend to let anybody downtown influence us in any way, shape, or form. We want the influence to come from Harlem and from, where, and from other Harlems around the country. Now, this doesn't mean we're anti-outside of Harlem. This doesn't mean we're anti-Bronx or anti-White Plains or anti-White or anti-German or anything like that but it means we're pro-Harlem. We're pro-ourselves. We want to start doing something for ourselves. That's all it means. It means that we, we want to stop begging you for your school. We want you to we, get out of the way and let us straighten out the schools in Harlem. Yes, sir. I, I just answered it when I said from tonight on there'll be a hot town in the ho hot time in the ho old town. I answered it when this gentleman over here asked. It's a song that we used to sing. An implication, an implied threat. I never imply any threats to anyone. I'm a Muslim. My religion is Islam. It's a religion of peace. And sir. Yes, I do believe there'll be further attempts on my life. I know them. They're foaming at the mouth. Uh, the rank and file Muslim means well. It's those at the hierarchy who are living off the fatted calf who don't mean well. And uh, this coming Sunday at uh, 2 o'clock, 
I, as I say, our, our program will be unfolded. Elijah Muhammad knows he has done some good things and he has done some bad things. Uh, he knows that if he had wanted to, he could have uh, united our people with the Muslim world just by teaching the right religion of Islam. He could have done so. The entire Muslim world would have accepted him. As it is now, the Muslim world has rejected him. He can never go into the Muslim world saying that he's a prophet or that Allah came over here in the flesh. They would cut his head off if he said that over there. I mean, he knows this. Uh, none of his followers can go over there without denouncing him. It's impossible for them to go to Mecca or any other place unless they ascribe to Islam as it is ascribed to over there. So he was in a position to unite us with the Muslim world, those of us who are Muslims. He was also in a position to unite us with Africa. But you cannot read anything that Elijah Muhammad has ever written that's pro-African. I defy you to find one word in his direct writing that, that's pro-African. You can't find it. Listen to this question this man asked me. <laughs> what are you trying to get at? No, he asked me, listen, now I got to tell him what you asked me. He asked me, don't I think if I got hurt, you know, don't, wouldn't some of my followers retaliate? What are you trying to say? <laughs> or what are you trying to get me to say? I mean, it's okay. I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not uh, going to get you in any trouble. These are your friends in here. But I, but I just want them to hear what you're asking me. That's all. <laughs> I just want them to hear what you're asking me. You wouldn't get in no trouble in here.